Hey everyone, this is Ross, and in today's video, I have the pleasure of reviewing a fig for you guys today called Golden Rainbow, um, also known as Ben's Golden Riverside. And for those of you guys who watch Ben's videos, um, also on YouTube, he reviews a bunch of different figs, and this is his favorite. This is um, one that he really raves about. In fact, last year, he did a, a taste test a taste review of some of his varieties with people in the area of where he lives in Seattle. He brought them together and this was the one that everybody loved. And um, so it's not just him, but I do know that Ben really likes large figs, that's for sure. And he also, I think, likes more melony type figs, more figs that taste like melons or honey. Um, it's not my personal preference and there's not really a, a better type you know it's all up to opinion and all up to what you guys like um, my personal preference is that I really like berry figs with really intense bold flavors um, and I'm sure Ben does as well that also are a bit jammy and dense and thick and uh, really have a great texture to them I don't necessarily go for very large figs such as this believe it or not this is one of the larger figs that I I grow and there's another fig that I grow that's just like this. It's called yellow long neck. And there's also another fig out there that exists called long yellow. And long yellow has been actually in the USDA's collection, UC Davis is where it's housed. Um, and long yellow is actually a reasonably common fig, but the yellow long neck was kind of propagated by a few people uh, I think it came out of the CFRG, if I'm not mistaken. Um, a couple of folks over there, I think George is one of them, and Harvey at Figaholics kind of ended up getting it. And um, it also has been tissue cultured, and I don't know if that's the exact strain, but what you guys see right here in front of you, these leaves, is the yellow long neck. And I was able to harvest a number of figs off of this younger graft that I had put on this rootstock. You can see down here, I have a number of figs grafted onto Gros Monstrous de Lipari, and you can see the Gros Monstrous figs down here. And on the left is a fig called Albo from Italy, another, well, medium-sized honey fig. And then on the right is Yellow Longneck. And uh, it was a goal of mine to get yellow long neck and long yellow and the golden rainbow all together to be able to compare them but my long yellow is no longer in this world it's unfortunately it has died but i'm pretty convinced uh just through photos of seeing all three of the figs and seeing the leaf patterns of all three of the figs and seeing how they grow observing um not just from you know a couple people but also from many different people who have been growing let's say long yellow for a long time or from people who have been growing yellow long neck for a long time they all seem to me in my mind to be the same fig and people have different opinions on this and to me honestly the whole debate doesn't really matter at this point uh, because this is not for me going to be the fig that's the end all be all <laughs> um, it's a big fig it looks great we haven't tasted it yet so we don't really know for sure but just by appearances and what the interior color looks like in no way will this ever be my favorite fig i just i'm, I'm a much bigger fan of the berry figs than i am of the honey figs however that's not to say that this particular tree golden rainbow as you can see here we planted one of them in the ground and it's grown really well it's a very vigorous variety and in fact it's so vigorous but it also puts out fruits as it grows and i actually have an air layer on it down here to have ourselves a third tree of it you can see the very large fruit down here that's starting to swell it takes a very long time from this fig being green and hard to swelling and to be perfect it does really require a lot of patience and in fact i may I probably could have even let this go even longer if I wanted. But it seems very soft to me. 
it's not yet ugly but I think it's not ugly because we haven't been getting the rain that we normally get and my yellow long necks a number of them had unfortunately ripened in a period of rain and they didn't do too horribly in the rain but some of them did split a little bit on the bottom and it was a bit unfortunate um, so I had to pick them a little bit earlier than I would have liked but we put them on a fig pizza that my buddy Dom and I had made and it came out fantastic I personally believe I'm gonna put the fig down here so I can hold the camera with two hands but I personally believe that the honey figs are really fantastic for cooking they really are not the star of the show and they just add something wonderful now I want you guys to pay attention here to this leaf give you guys a little bit of a lesson there's three different leaf patterns on this tree you have one here that's three lobes you have one that's single lobed you can see another three lobes here and you have a five lobe leaf this is all from yellow long neck that we're looking at and on each and every one of these is a serrated edge to it and if I zoom in maybe you guys can get a better view but all of these leaves have serrated edges and that's a distinct characteristic, I think, of this particular leaf. See how they're serrated here on the edges? Um, some, obviously, you can tell this is another variety. You can see the serrations better. Um, here's more of the leaves right here. But what I want everybody to do right now is to kind of picture this leaf here in your mind for just a moment. Um, picture this leaf. This is the five, the typical five lobe leaf, leaf that you'll see in just a minute. I'm gonna bring you guys over to the golden rainbow tree. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, this is pretty much the same leaf. And you can see the same serrations on the edges. Uh, my tree is quite young, but you can see down here on the the areas of less vigor lower down on the tree There's a three lobed leaf another three lobed leaf down here And then at the very bottom when there's even less vigor is one lobe um, So to me the, the leaf patterns match exactly they also they also form extremely large leaves this is a variety that is just stupidly vigorous. It's very, very vigorous. Um, to the point where it's almost, you would think, so vigorous that it wouldn't fruit very heavily, but it's the complete opposite. It actually fruits heavily and grows very quickly. So, in my opinion, this is probably, in terms of like the, the size of the fruit, in terms of how productive it is, in terms of, um, how much fruit you would get per tree let's if you and you were to weigh that let's say you had a whole branch let's show you guys the black madeira as an example that has fruit on it if you were to weigh all these figs after they got ripe how much would they weigh what would the total be i personally think yellow long neck would have the highest total of any fig at least that i grow uh, you know, I don't grow Californian brown turkey, so maybe that would be some sort of competition right there. Um, in fact, I don't have many large figs, but uh, this would be number one in terms of just the overall weight. If you were to weigh them all up, it's, an it's a very large fig. Um, and I've also heard from Ben himself, who's told me, that yellow long neck is also very early. Or, I'm sorry, the golden rainbow... Ben B's Golden uh, Riverside is a very early fig. And in fact, it ripens as early as Ron de Bordeaux for him in his climate, which is extraordinary. To have such a large fig as this, to ripen this, to ripen that early, to be one of the earliest figs of the year, and to be that productive, it just doesn't make sense. It really doesn't. Um, this is an anomaly. This is a, an incredible fig for those reasons. Like, uh, you would never have guessed that a fig this big would ripen that early. It just doesn't, it just doesn't exist anywhere else. But it does exist <laughs> with yellow long neck. 
and also with long yellow. The both of them ripen very early. They're both very large. In fact, looking at the figs that were ripening here on my yellow long neck, just about a week, <coughs> excuse me guys, just about a week or a week and a half ago, um, they had resembled this golden rainbow almost exact. I don't really, I, personally, from my perspective here, and it's only been one year's worth of data, I haven't had all these trees for a super long amount of time, but from judging from, uh, from this year alone, and all the pictures I've seen, and all the data people have showed me, and all the information I've talked to about, uh, try to get out of different people, these figs are all the same. Um, so let's cut it open. We're done talking about it here. Let's see if we can taste any differences between the golden rainbow and yellow long neck, at least from my yard. Let me get you guys a nice view here. By the way, I want to thank Chris for this awesome knife. Really has come in handy this year. That was really, really easy to cut. Let's show you guys the inside. Here's the unveiling. Not bad. It looks just like my yellow long neck. Um, in fact, Something interesting that is uh, worth noting is that if you look in the inside here, in the very center, I'll show you guys with the knife. In the very center is some red fig flowers. They're turning pink, turning red. And per perhaps if this fig were to be ripened in a warmer climate or maybe caprified, it would turn a pinkish or a red, but you can see all these red different areas in the center where the void is and that also was shown in my yellow long neck additionally there are some of these in here which almost looks a bit spoiled some of these flowers that probably are not spoiled but uh, probably just didn't ripen properly and I also saw that in my yellow long neck so uh, from appearance I'm getting more evidence now just from opening this up, that they are indeed the same. Let's try it and see if we detect any differences here in the fruits. Again, a very large fig, probably, it's easily 80 grams, uh, maybe probably 80 to 110, I would say. I don't have a scale. So it's actually quite good, it's very juicy. It's very juicy, like uh, there's just, it seems like there's water, not a thick, it's not a thick juicy, like a lot of honey or syrup that's pouring out. It's a uh, very watery, it's very loose, runny. Um, and it almost feels like the nectar is just very runny on every bite. So it's extremely juicy. I mean, the thing is filled. It's very refreshing because of that. Like, uh, you know, it's not very, it's not too rich, although it is very sweet. And you could say it is quite rich, but in my opinion, it has a nice refreshing quality to it. really good. Let me see if I can peel it. Yeah, easily peeled. And we're going to taste just the skin here. Skin's very good. Don't not eat the skin, I'll tell you that much. Let's try the pulp.
it's just a very good fit, guys. Very refreshing. There is definitely some spoiling. Just a little tiny bit that was going on in the center there. Which is very strange. Because that is not something I would have expected. But, uh, yeah. Now, it's also not the most complex honey fig I've ever eaten. To me, it's very, it's very big, refreshing, sweet, juicy. It's got a lot of nice characteristics to it. But for me, it's only about a three and a half out of five. So I have many figs that I would put higher in fact, I have a honey fig that I personally think is better. I have two honey figs I personally think are better. Um, and you could say that I have other honey figs that... Um, I have other honey figs that you could say maybe are not honey figs, but maybe you could also say that they are honey figs. I would say Albo, LSU, Huye, Babera Branca, Zafiro, Sweet Joy, all five of those are better figs, better tasting figs than that. And I would also go and say that uh, my Kadota that I had is one of my first figs ever, is also better than that. My Maryland Seedless that I've had years ago is also better than that. Um, I would say that's probably better than LSU Champagne. And we're talking flavor here, guys. For other characteristics, you may decide to keep a fig. You know, just because it doesn't have the best flavor doesn't mean that uh, you're not going to keep it around. Um, I would, I would, I would venture to guess, and if you had dry weather, that fig wouldn't get the sugar spots that most honey figs do, because it it didn't, as you saw, it hasn't rained here. And the fig we just showed you had very few blemishes on it. It's very big. Uh, it is soft, but the skin, um, I, I would have guessed that this thing could be a pretty good commercial fig. Um, probably not the best, but if you wanted to have a large fig, uh, you could probably sell that fig commercially. Assuming you grow it here, and I'm talking about in this climate, and you cover it. You don't let any rain touch the fig because you don't want those sugar spots on it. Um, and it would be extremely productive and profitable because of the amount of productivity and the size that it puts out. So for me, I think it's got great qualities to it. By no means is it my, my favorite fig. It's not even really in my top 30, I would say. Um, Maybe that's a bit harsh, but really, I'm telling you guys, I'm trying to give you guys the most honest truth I can give you here, for at least from my own opinion. But um, anyway, guys, um, that was Golden Rainbow, and we also talked about Yellow Long Neck and Long Yellow. Um, I 